What's going on folks and welcome to the first episode of the War Tales series. Special thanks to Shiro Games for sponsoring this content and I want to go ahead and start by introducing you to the squad. I did play War Tales back when it first released in early access and we had a lot of fun there. Uh, it was vastly different back then. There were so many different things about it mechanically, uh, gameplay wise, just so many different things. I remember that I didn't really make it very far. I think I maybe put about 100, 150 hours into it before I kind of stopped. Um, I do have, I believe, 18 members total in my troop. However, not all of them are fighters, of course. Four of them are just regular horses. So starting from the animals up, I got my first bear over here on the left side, King Rolo. Second bear, King Bjorn, right here in the middle. Both of these, of course, are, you know, references from the Viking show. I used to love that show. And my third one, my favorite bear, this is my bread and butter right here, is Sir Bubbles. He is the powerhouse of the group right now. He's got... A whopping 912 health i swear when i first saw this like how much health bears get i was like this is crazy this is op but when you set them on fire when you um give them like a bleeding debuff or put poison on them their health starts going down pretty fast even a couple stacks of poison and they're going to start losing at least like 100 to 200 health per tick so you have to be kind of careful when you're dealing with um, enemies while you're using a bear and certain ones you kind of want to avoid altogether, especially if your members are capable of applying poison or fire, which some of mine actually are. So aside from that, we've got ourselves just going from left to right up here. I've got Medieval, my main guy, who is a swordsman, Capitan. He's also a miner right here. Looks like I'm actually about to level up. I didn't even notice. Or wait, was that always there? It says 495 out of 320. That's interesting. Not sure what that's about, but... Um, he's got the, just a baseline set up right now. I've got galvanized troops, of course, from the captain, I believe, ability that he has. Encouragement here. Actually, that might be a swordsman one. I'm not sure. He's galvanized? No, it's not. Okay. Yeah, that's from him being a captain. So then I got encouragement for the protection, disarm, protection, taunt, valorous duel, and counterattack for him. For Alexander, this guy is my bread and butter as far as the damage side goes. He is normally the first one to attack yeah, big groups, a play, uh, big groups of mobs. Like as soon as I see that one of one of the next enemies is gonna go, um, is gonna you know take their turn, and I need to kill that group really quickly, I send Alexander in. Um, so the his build is actually a little bit weirder, but I want to explain my thought process behind this. So of course he has a maim skill on his um, great axe so he's able to of course apply bleeding on critical hits but he also does a little bit of arcing aoe he has a tactical order because he is a lieutenant and i noticed that during the last update they actually changed the way that this works instead of it causing your target to utilize another attack of opportunity it instead allows you to generate twice as much valor for all the units in your immediate area but he does have Cutting Maelstrom. It's very powerful, very, very powerful ability, especially when co when combined with Recklessness, which means the first attack in each fight deals 150%. These are upgraded skills as well, by the way. And this right here is where he kind of goes off the beaten path. Now, if we go into the leveling menu, um, I would assume, I haven't really checked yet, but I would assume most people are probably either going for Battle Cry on the level eight ability to get Brutality for everybody or Ecstasy maybe. Um, I can I can imagine that most people are probably trying that I use challenging shout because this draws all people in in a certain range to him which is extremely useful for setting up those four people attacks I've been setting up four people cutting maelstroms quite a lot since I got this skill so I prefer this one maybe, maybe it is a more preferred skill actually but especially with the upgrade applying fragility I think this one is an extremely useful ability to have for him instead of somebody else having it um, so he also does have Wrath. I actually do need to, need to get Wrath on Henry, who's my other Berserker. Uh, but this guy is more about the Arm of Justice, which allows me to execute an additional attack of opportunity once I taunt an enemy. Rampage, of course, but I need to have that Wrath in there. But he is the one that does have the Battle Cry itself. So he is capable of buffing people. But just as a quicker, just as a quicker breakdown, I got William, who's my main tank, I would say. Um, he is a destroyer, but he's got a lot of uh, basically armor crushing and deflection based stuff. Not as much as I would say medieval does. Ivar is my uh, secondary, he's like my second, or I would say secondary, secondary Axeman. Like after Henry, this is the next Axeman that I have, but he's more of a backup tank. And uh, he does have, I, this isn't, I don't think a legendary, but um, this is a pretty cool axe that I found from one of the new, uh, one of the new updates that they put out. So, oh no, I'm sorry. This is from a champion. That's what I did. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I killed. 
So he's using that. This Inquisitor person, I believe I found her in one of the prisons. Um, so she's another backup tank. Um, I got a pretty heavy tank group going on right now. I believe the last time that I played through War Tales, I had a little bit of a different setup, but I'm going primarily tanks for this one because I want to make sure that I have enough people to set up engagements and then enough DPS to execute those engagements once once they're set. So Henry, he's a, of course, a berserker, like I said. Philip, he is another uh, hammer user. This guy's a vanguard, though. He's using the Dagon guns hammer i forgot exactly where you get this from one of the one of the champions i believe i also did kill the axe based champion um, but i can't use this one yet because it's level 10 and uh when i i think i killed them around level six or seven when my group was around that stage so uh they just kind of scale that person a little bit farther ahead of your group either way it might not be the same on the other difficulty but at least on mine this is what happened here so i gotta wait till alexander gets to 10 but that's gonna be super fun he's gonna be destroying people but as for Philip, he's got a charge ability here and Dagon's punishment. Um, I think he's he's got a decent setup. I think the only person right now in my group entirely that I'm kind of iffy on their build when it comes down to it is Elizabeth, who is like my secondary swordsman. She's more of an AOE one, but she doesn't have a great sword that's capable of using intercept. And um, instead of her using medium armor, like as a sword master, which would probably make more sense, I've actually got her on heavy. When I first got her, I was thinking maybe I should have just put the kick on Medieval instead of getting encouragement because uh, he could still use the heavy armor, but then he could also be like a tank buster and then I could get I could get someone else in her slot, but I just ended up sticking with her. So she's a part of the family now. So she's a two handed swordsman, but she's got the destabilizing strike. She's she's a medic as well. Uh, Valorous duel and counterattack. And of course, like Valorous duel, because she's AOE, I feel like it might make more sense if I had just the Valorous chain and then of course like the laceration but it's just not the way that i went with her um so i'm not sure exactly how that's going to end up in the future but so far she's been working okay ryan is my beastmaster so she is the one that executes sir bubbles king rollo and bjorn so she's got uh one of the one of the champion bows i believe this is this is the one i need to get this one upgraded actually uh piercing arrow she's got attack of course taming arrow for fury and riposte being at, uh, being attached to one of the bears that i shoot or the horse if i want to she's also a medic and aim. she has aim i need to get run on her as well though i need to get wrath on henry and run on ryan when i can violet and uh oh just sorry i almost forgot jezebel is my herald so um she's actually got a very interesting build as well she did actually have a melee spear um, not too long ago but then i found this one which is an upgradable one and i think i got this off of uh completing one of the new weekly quests that they have available now or maybe a champion i don't think it was a champion actually it was somewhere it was somewhere else if not one of the weekly quests but this is like a ranged only one so it's powerful throw so i can't really engage with her so what i do is i kind of just use her as like a support class now her sweet spot that applies destabilization for uh, I thought this was for ranged attacks, but I guess it's just for attacks in general. It says if I don't in my turn, if I am in turn while not engaged in combat, they gain fury. And then I have Valor support so she can generate those points when I need them to. And then I got Rallying Cry for her, which I felt like was really useful because Henry can apply the brutality, but she can apply the fury. So if I really want to get messy on the DPS, I can go in uh, and do some of that. And then she's got Run if she needs to disengage as well. She's friends with everybody, I'm noticing. Holy crap. And then Violet, last but not least, uh, she is, oh, and I should mention Bucephalus as well, who's my horseman, my war, pon war pony. Always been very torn about him ever since I first got him because he wasn't as useful as like a real tank. But the rearing inspiration, it, it does come in handy from time to time, especially in the tombs when I need to get from one side of the room to another very quickly. Uh, this does actually come in handy. But for Violet, um, she actually had a little bit of a different setup beforehand. She's right now using the Viper uh, legendary weapon which is uh, allows you to use toxic blades. So it basically consumes all poisons on the target. And for quite a while, I had her set up as more of a uh, st uh, strategist. So I had her using smoke screen in the beginning, but then I realized I should probably be executing these poisons properly. So I turned her into a poisoner, but then I also um, went ahead and got the explosive gas. So this applies four stacks of poison and vulnerability for those who are already poisoned. And then of course, if I'm backstabbing them, I apply two more poisons with the poison weapon. And then this also doubles the poison. Um, the only thing though, is I need to get, um, they changed up the recipes recently, but uh, I, know, I know you might be wondering this, but I am gonna try to get her 
um, poison pouches that she's capable of throwing. Uh, I did have those before this last update uh, in the offhand, but then when they made the new update, for some reason, uh, I did, it kind of disappeared from my recipes. So I'm not sure. I think it's one of these ones, but I've been trying to find the recipe. I'm not sure where to get it now, but I haven't been able to really locate it. So I need to get that as soon as possible again, because I had it before that update. But then I guess they must have reset a lot of that stuff. But anyway, that's my crew so far. Let's go ahead and get some rest up here and we'll get back into the journey. We got a little bit of a ways to go for right now. Um, I've been doing a lot of trading as far as like trying to earn money. I've been finding that trading is amazing for gaining money. I've been getting so, so much. And it's been helping a lot with uh, getting extra points as far as like the paths go. I'll show you my paths in just a second. But what is this actually? Hold on. We'll produce. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know. You could do that with the new campfires. Cool. Right, let me get this going here and rest. I probably need to get rid of those carcasses, actually. Perfect. All right. And I've been using these train. This is an upgraded training dummy. Most of the camp it's itself is upgraded. Uh, we still got a ways to go on these middle area parts here. Um, this tent as well camp chest i don't know if you can upgrade that i'll have to look as well lecterns not that not that upgraded the training dummy is though for sure that one is because uh, i need to i need to make sure my companions are always gaining experience but we'll get we'll get this going uh, slowly, slowly but surely and then let's see what he's talking about facing the go packs so goes back was too much for me you'd be all right buddy don't worry about it uh rest up a little bit longer cool and actually fighting the ghost packs in this game used to terrify me but I've actually been doing okay against them. Not not really any trouble at all. Um, so it's been doing it's been going a lot better. But I remember when I first started playing the game back when it was in early access, especially the ghost packs were freaking terrifying. They were absolutely terrifying. So I also do have a couple of travel posts already built um, because that is a mechanic that's now in the game, which is pretty cool actually. It allows you to uh, travel between different different uh, travel posts depending on which ones you have built it's basically fast travel the only thing is it's kind of expensive i noticed uh, especially if you have trading materials on you like just for example i think i have this one built right yeah so if i talk to this person they're gonna be like you can travel so right now i've got three built the one i'm in i just don't have storm in there but let's see, if I wanted to travel fast travel to Corthia right now, that's going to cost $930 in uh, coins in commodity tax. That's that's pretty high, right? And then I got to pay my wages on top of that. So I'm just like, nah, probably not worth it. Uh, they should probably lower that because that feels a pretty OP. I mean, I, I don't expect I don't I don't know how you could really expect to make a profit doing that. Uh, you'd have to. I don't know. I really don't know. That's that's a hefty fine to pay. Like, I'm not going to pay. 900 you know how long it takes to get 900 gold in most days screw that but uh, i am actually running from the law you probably notice the suspicion meter up above there oh my pass so right now i'm level six in power and glory almost forgot level six in trade and craftsmanship and i got level three at the moment in uh the crimes and chaos although i'm expecting that to start raising quite a bit now because of what i've done but uh level seven in mysteries and wisdom my highest one so far and I've pretty much um, I've got a good progress going on pretty much all of these perks, but I still need to get the rest of them. Same thing with the recipes in my uh, my general menu. And I, I like to keep my points kind of saved up a little bit until I need something in particular, because uh, I've, I've been able to unlock a, a good majority of this stuff. I probably do need to dive a little bit more into alchemy uh, because I don't have everything that I really need to have in there. Oh, you guess you can't upgrade the camp chest. But uh, as far as the blacksmithing goes, um, I need to get, I, I do have this material unlocked in my alchemy menu to be able to like craft it. I just need to figure out where exactly to get that stuff. Cooking, I probably do need to get more of those, but I, you never know what's gonna pop up. You might, you know, I, I like to keep them saved up just in case something useful pops up, like I find a recipe for it, or uh, I think there's a couple of other ones in here I need to get still, maybe this one. I don't know, we'll see. But uh, yeah, we're doing okay so far on that. And as far as like the relic goes, um, I did actually complete, I think, one of these books entirely. I'll have to double check again, but um, or I might need one more symbol. But when I get to another tomb, I'm going to have to make sure that I uh, 
get that last symbol going or get whatever I know whatever else I need going but as I was saying um, so the suspicion menu up here I actually raided a golden caravan which was pretty difficult to do even on the difficulty the, the, the novice combat difficulty it was difficult after that update because like I said uh, that update introduced a bunch of veteran mobs with stars on them so it was um, they were pretty tough and then also on top of that they get reinforcements every single time I tried to I tried to kind of wait them out see if like if I caught them near a forest or if I caught them like uh, far from a city if I could avoid the reinforcements but it seems like they just come every time but yeah it was tough it was pretty tough all right but something I haven't done yet is completed this Nair Nair Rolf arena I don't know how you really say that but uh, I did see that they have a bow that I can win so I'm really interested in getting into this. Oh, wait, I need to make sure that I uh, rest up before I do this. Make sure I have my full Valor points going. Can't forget that. Okay. Yeah, let's give this a shot. Hopefully this will uh, work a little bit better. Oh, great. There's guards right there. Okay. And uh, my characters are like overtuned for this to the max right now. Uh, I've been trying to level up my guys all to level 8 before I start getting anybody past 9. Because uh, since it's adaptive, I'm assuming that once I get a, at least like one or two people past 9, everybody else that I start fighting is going to be a level 9. So I got to make sure that I'm prepared for before then. Because right now when I recruit people, they're starting out at level like 4 or 5-ish. So I need to make sure that I'm good to go on that. Um, I'm not sure who I should bring in. When I bring in Violet, it's kind of messy. Um because she's able to apply the poisons, which does a crap ton of damage over time to the enemy. But then that also affects my guys too. So I'm just not sure exactly if I should keep her in there. Um, but I definitely want to bring Alexander. He's an always, he's he's always, always got to have him. And then I think I, I wanted to bring Ryan in again, but I think she's kind of useless in here because I mean, she's focused more around beast mastery. So unless I could bring the bear in, which I if I could bring in bubbles, he'd be my fourth for sure. Uh, unless I can bring the bear in, I don't really care. So I probably, I, I might stick with just Henry. Um, yeah, because uh, between rounds, it's going to allow us to kind of choose if we want to repair our armor or health, you know, heal ourselves or what have you. And Violet, if, if I let her uh, throw her poison and crap, it's probably going to, I mean, I could just learn to aim realistically. Um, you know, it probably will be fine. We'll, we'll find out. We'll figure it out. Let's do this. I just got to do it in a way where I don't end up hitting my other guys. So, okay. Okay. All right, so I'm going to take Alexander first. Let's put this bad boy right in the middle of these two bastards. Actually, I don't know if I could reach those two. How big is that? Man, it'll be really bad if I can't reach those two. Let's see. Perfect. This is why I like the challenging shout. Or what's that called? Yeah, challenging shout. Boom. Boom goes the dynamite. Got both of them right then and there. That's two down already. You know what I mean? Perfect. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and send... I'm going to keep William on Bronin. And I'm going to try to get Medieval right in here. I might be able to disarm this person as well. Perfect. And I don't want to waste too many of my Valor points, but pop an encouragement. Okay, popping a disengage, are we? Useless. All right, I'm going to go ahead and send William in here because I want to make sure that uh, that wolf's probably going to attack Violet, but oh well. I want to make sure this dude does not, though. Okay. So... Let's see. I would poison the wolf too, but like I mentioned, well, I mean, eh, not too late now. Oh, maybe not. That's juicy. That's that's what I want right there. Yeah, so Violet's pretty much can't like she she deals a crap ton of damage when she executes that poison strike. And uh like they're gonna take a lot of damage over time. It's just that my guys, you know, when it starts to stack up, they do too. I 
think I'm going to go ahead and continue on this this path that I'm going on. Um, actually, you, my friend, go there. Oh, I was so confident he'd be able to wipe him out in one go. Alexander usually does more damage than this. That's weird. Do I get another hit? No? Okay, then. Oh, well, I can use Wrath. Perfect. Yeah, this battle's pretty much over. Oh, I just wanted to quickly highlight in the second fight how screwed these three are. Game over, man. That's why I like Alexander. That's why I use that challenging shout. Goodbye. All of them. Just all three. That's fa that's hilarious. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this guy right down here. You can go ahead and get hit Violet. That's okay. Okay, so far so good. This is the last fight. Trying to take on the champion. Let's see what he's going to be. Oh, shiz. There's a bear. Okay. Um, Who goes first? Wolf. Okay. Got it. Got it, got it. I think we can do this. Uh, oh, he's only got 232 health. Are you serious? Wait, that bear goes, right? Oh, okay. This is going to be... This is going to be relatively... Okay. Are pumping that bear full of poison. Oh, juicy. Oh, yeah. He might die right away. Let's see how strong that bear is going to be, though. But I wanted to make sure I get that because you're going to see right now, like, just he's probably going to be super strong. Oof. Not super, super strong, but. Hey, he didn't take any poison damage. What the hell? Okay. All right, let's do this. Oh, juicy. I wasn't sure if I could do it. Oh, yeah. He's out for the count. Oops. You get second chance now? Oh, my God. I won? That's hilarious. Oh, I thought I had to kill them all. Oh, well, that's it then. All right, let's see how good this bow is. Better be good. Best steel shot. Uh Oh. Oh. Attacks of opportunity. Oh, my God. Oh, that's fantastic. That's actually pretty good. Is this upgradable? Oh, my God. I didn't know this bow existed. Oh, that. Is oh, Bubbles is going to eat good tonight. See, I, and the, the tricky thing is I really need to get these two leveled up. I kind of wish that there was like a training dummy that you could use animals for, because right now um, wh when I got Bubbles originally, he was at like level five or six already. And then he spent a lot of time in my group leveling up. But then I got these two later on and it's been a little difficult getting them experience for some reason. Not really sure why, but they're kind of hard stuck at six right now. So it'd be great to get them up to bubbles level. If there, if there was like some kind of training dummy I could, or if I could put them on the training dummy, that'd be awesome. Bubble does like 80 damage. And then right now these guys are doing like 30 or 40 a hit, which still isn't bad. And they've got decent HP it's just, you know, could be better. But either way, folks, that is going to be all for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is an amazing bow. I actually cannot wait to use this because this in conjunction with our attack ability and our taming arrow is just going to decimate people. I'm super excited about this. I'll catch you folks later on the next one. Have a good one.